get ready for our first event podcast for 2024 as Sigma Group kicks off its monumental 10th anniversary year with a star-studded event. Mark your calendars for Sigma Eurasia happening this February 25th till the 27th at the Dubai Intercontinental Festival City. For this particular podcast, we will naturally interwind Sigma with our sister brand, AIPC, recognizing the inseparable link between both brands, especially prominent in the vibrant city of Dubai. I am Maria, your host, presenting you an exceptional lineup of guests and engaging topics, all centered around the dynamic landscape of the UAE. Without further ado, let's get started. For this segment, I would like to welcome Dr. Sar Almadani, a truly remarkable, multi award winning serial entrepreneur, as our guest. She is a former board member selected by His Highness Sheikh Dr. Sultan bin Mohammed Al Asimi for the UAE SME Council under the patronage of the Dubai Ministry of Economy as well as the Saraya Chamber of Commerce and Industry. Joining us all the way from Dubai, the esteemed Miss Almadani. Welcome. Thank you so much for having me. This is exciting. We're thrilled to have you on the Sigma podcast, especially with such a significant event like Sigma Eurasia coming up. As you embark on the Sigma World Tour representing our brand this year, what elements of Sigma Eurasia make it particularly significant for you beyond the fact that Dubai is your hometown? So what I love about Sigma is that they are touring the world and every city they go to, they impact it differently. Because Sigma is a big brand and Sigma is a brand that's creating a lot of moves and they're creating a lot of noise towards a niche audience, which is related to gaming and tech and all that. Now, I think what makes the Asia tour special is the fact that tech, AI, and everything in between is booming in that part of the world. And there is a lot of, I would say, not only demand, but there's a lot of like hunger for, for, for that kind of scene, especially in the UAE, in Dubai, where I come from, where Dubai has it as a mission where it wants to be the number one leading country when it comes to technology. So this is why I think it's significant. It's big. There's a lot of projects coming out from here. There's a hunger, there's an appetite, and also um, it suits the vision of where the country is going. So I, I feel like Dubai is going to be big this time. We fully agree with that, which is why we're kicking off our world tour specifically in Dubai this year. Moving on to your business portfolio, which is truly remarkable, I must confess. You feature collaborations with major brands such as L'Oreal, Apple, Cartier, Bentley, and many, many more. Simultaneously, you also dedicate your time to charitable and devours as the UAE Global Goodwill Ambassador for Smile Train and United Nations. Looking ahead into 2024, Sarah, are there any new verticals or businesses you plan to venture into, invest in, or explore? Well, uh, it's interesting that you actually captured that part of what I do because not a lot of people do. Um, of course, we enjoy doing business. We enjoy venturing in different ideas. Most of the businesses I invest in or I work with or I'm, I'm part of is always tech, okay? Because that's the future. And in that uh, window, I want to be an ethical tech entrepreneur because tech can take an unethical diversion as well. So I love technology, but at the same time, I know that all these things we do in terms of business is just, you know, us exploring life and trying, you know, to create and dream and all do all these things. But as a person, I believe that success is what I do for myself and then what I do for others. So the act of service and serving humanity and the world is embedded not only in my personality and it's on autopilot, but embedded even in all the businesses that I do. And I always want to either make the world a better place or better humanity. So that's very important for me because in the end, I can, I can open a restaurant, I can open a hotel, I can do whatever I want, right? But if I'm not 
serving my purpose, I feel like I'm disconnected from who I am and not aligned. So my purpose is I have to spread light. I have to make the world a better place and humanity a better place. So that's that's intertwined for me. But but as you asked for the future, um, well, Sada's unpredictable. So you would see me jump on different things, do different things. But I mean, sometimes it's hard to keep up with what I do. But I can tell you one thing. It's all aligned under one purpose. That's the main thing. What comes on top as a dressing for my cake, it can differ from different uh, aspects, different windows, different businesses, different segments. But the base is always the same. You spoke about businesses you're part of and businesses that you will be venturing in. And obviously, we can't help but mention your involvement and brand ambassadorship for our brand Sigma Group. Now, could you share why you chose to become an ambassador and how do you see your values aligning with those of Sigma? What, in your view, makes this partnership significant, Sarah? I, the thing is, I don't embark on ambassadorships with any brand. And when I met the Sigma brand, and especially the owner, Iman, um, his story uh, captivated me because he's a person that never gives up. And that reminded me of my story. And what I loved about Sigma is they didn't just care about how famous I am or how many followers I have. They really, really loved my story as well. And for me, um, I don't like to be looked at as like a, a famous person with numbers. I have a story, I have something to say, I have a legacy. And when a brand is interested in that legacy and that reputation you built, then you know that this is a marriage made in heaven, you know? And then because I love tech, because I, I, I love community, because I love bringing people together, because I love awareness, I love with the vision of Sigma and how they want to spread their vision around the world. And for me, it was like a no brainer. I was like, I would love to be part of this brand and I want to be part of their growth. And their growth is significant. Like they grow month by month. It's insane. And you want to be part of a success story because you believe in these things. So I, I just fell in love with everyone from the team, the owner, their stories, how, how kind and nice they are and how they interact with each other. It's like a family. It's not like I'm the boss, I'm this, I'm this. So it was like a family and I love that kind of dynamic. So I was like, it's a no brainer. I told my team, I told my manager, I'm like, let's go for it. We are genuinely aligned with your values, vision, and the principles you advocate. This alignment is the driving force behind Sigma's interest in pursuing this ambassadorship. As we're wrapping up, do you have any final thoughts or key points you'd like to leave us with? No, I just want to tell everybody, please don't miss out on the Dubai event. It's going to be different. It's going to be huge. We're doing a lot of interesting things, twisting things a little bit in a different way. But, you know, Sigma will deliver what it always promises. So you should be there. And I'm there. Don't you guys want to see me? <laughs> <laughs> I know I do. Thank you, Sarah. That wraps up this segment featuring the incredible Dr. Sarah Almadani. To our listeners, stay tuned for more engaging conversations coming right up. Sigma Play offers a unique opportunity for casino and sportsbook operators to expand their reach and connect with a wider audience. By partnering with us, you can showcase your games and services, improve your online presence and attract more players. Let us assist you in growing your business in the highly competitive gaming industry. Moving on to our next special feature, we will take you on an immersive journey into the insightful minds of some of our distinguished speakers who will be present at the conference. Joining us from the heart of the action, our man on the ground, Anthony. Hi Maria, we're in Dubai. We're here to meet a number of speakers for AIBC 2024. Anticipation is building, Anthony. Let's plunge right in. Hi, Maria. Thank you for having us on your podcast. It's truly an honor, Dr. Marwan. We deeply appreciate your acceptance of our invitation, as well as the participation of all the esteemed speakers in this special feature. Your presence adds significant value to our discussion. 
As we kick off, I'd love to hear your insights on this year's event in Dubai and what your expectations are. Well, we are very excited to participate in the AIBC uh, 2024 as a new uh, university uh, here in Dubai. Of course, we, we, our global hub office in Dubai because we do exist back home in the United States for over a decade. Uh, we are very excited to share our technology and our um, uh, success story and uh, our way of thinking and our model of teaching and uh, uh, our interaction with the industry especially the high-tech uh, uh, cutting-edge industries and uh, we um, we are looking forward to interact with other companies especially in Dubai where everything is happening uh, the latest technologies the latest uh, uh, industries and um, yeah well, listen, expectations. AABC is one of the best events in the world in, in this area. So I'm expecting to meet exciting companies working in, the, in, in our field, also investors and many new things that will come up during AIBC. That's where the novelties are in this world. So I think uh, this year is a special year for AIBC because AI is at the forefront everywhere right now. And I think uh, AI and blockchain, and you guys are agree with this with, uh, as the namesake AI and blockchain AIBC, right? We will see a lot of projects that are, are consolidating on this and really pushing the envelope when it comes to how we optimize AI using blockchain, how we optimize blockchain using AI as well. It goes both ways. And I think there are false mul force multipliers and we will see a lot of people jumping into this space. A lot of people who are uh, AI people that are interested in blockchain and vice versa as well. So this kind of em emergence between the two, uh, this is overlap, is going to create a lot of new kind of ideas. And we will have, uh, of course, workshops, we will have meetings, we will have a lot of uh, keyword and keynote sessions that we will see a lot of new ideas that might spark new businesses, might spark new kind of collaborations and it will be uh, really beneficial to anybody who attends because you will get value from your attendance not only through the sessions and the exhibitors but also through meeting each other and a very good setting which is the AIBC conference. The first time I'm attending here in uh, Eurasia uh, for sure, I'm definitely mostly uh, looking forward to meet founders and fellow investors. Uh, Dubai is becoming a hotspot, so it's great to see more uh, large conferences with a big name coming into the region. So very keen to be networking, to be hopefully finding a few checks to fill. Hi Maria, we are here in Dubai taking some comments from the speakers who will be attending AIBC end of this month, February 2024. Hello Clemence, we're delighted to have you here. Can you share with us what excites you the most or what you're eagerly anticipating? I'm very much looking forward to this conference in February. Um, I'm excited to actually meet new people, um, network, share new ideas uh, and learn about new projects, creative projects focusing mainly to, in AI and digital art. It is clear that Dubai is a trailblazer on so many fronts, including AI, and that uh, that's why AIBC in Dubai is so relevant in terms of uh, convening regional and global major actors in the AI field. What are your thoughts on our inaugural event of the year happening in Dubai? The, the idea of being in a country that is safe and free, it's beautiful, just like the blockchain. I want to take this opportunity to welcome conference attendees to Dubai, a global city of excellence that is open to all and certainly a leading global hub when it comes to advanced technologies and artificial intelligence, uh, where many technology companies are using its platform for technology venture capital, incubation, acceleration, R&D, and global technology business development and transactions. Dubai is the perfect environment, it's a perfect place to be for, to foster your business and grow it uh, from Dubai to the whole world. We sincerely appreciate all your wonderful comments. Stay tuned for our upcoming segment where we'll be exploring the perspectives of the general public on Dubai. Welcome to another exciting edition of Sigma Street Talks. Today, we're hitting the streets to capture the diverse opinions about the thriving city of Dubai. 
From its iconic skylines to its ambitious tech goals, we're here to find out what the general public thinks about this city. This is Sigma Street Talks. Let's dive in. What is the first thing that comes to mind when you think of the word Dubai? When I think about Dubai, I think about luxury, security, um, also the thing that uh, for Muslim people it's more easier to live there uh, because they can practice their religion. So I think it's a good uh, good thing and I think it's uh, Dubai is the future. Definitely glory and uh, extravaganza. <laughs> <laughs> Rich people. <laughs> so would you say it's a good place to do business there? Oh yeah, definitely, of course. I mean, I've, n I've never been there, but from all that I can see on the media and everything, yeah, of course, yeah, definitely. The weather is beautiful, it's clean, infrastructure is top, top of the world. So Dubai, as you were saying, is very well known for keeping its traditional concepts when it comes to religion and other important factors as well. But as you very well mentioned, it's also um, known for being technologically advanced. What is your take on this? So I think it's our century. It's important to uh, evaluate with uh, our times, but uh, trying to keep the religion and uh, the technology. Dubai announced this year the new regulatory body for gaming, the GCGRA. What's your thought on this, considering how traditional and conservative Dubai is as a country? Do you think they will advance to a point where casinos will be the norm? Do you think they will advance to a point where Dubai can become the next Las Vegas? Yeah, Dubai don't surprise, right? I mean, what's happening there? So uh, it is surprising, but uh, I think they will, maybe, but I think it will take a few years still to come, but yeah. Well, when it comes to religion, uh, I think they should keep it as it is. I mean, you can't change religion rules. If you're against the gambling, that's it. You don't think that it should be a problem? No, I think it's okay. I think it's, for me it's okay. And we, I have it in my country also. In every country somebody has, but it's up in you, yes? Exactly. I think it's good. I would love to, you know. Well, I mean, instead to fly to Las Vegas or for me, that I live in London, in England, you know, I mean, the six hours, six hours journey would be perfect to fly to Dubai, enjoy yourself. Instead to go, you know, different sightseeing, you know, it's nice to spend the night in the casino too. For the people who will be attending Sigma Eurasia this year, our event, where do you suggest that they visit and they go? Oh, I think uh, you can visit, uh, of course, the Burj Khalifa, because it's a uh, very famous and uh, maybe go uh, visit uh, the beach of Dubai. Maybe Bur, Khalifa, yes, and the uh, Palmera. Palmeria. I don't know. I don't know in English. Yeah, yes, yeah. Palmera. So as you know, Sigma is going to Dubai this February. Yeah. What is your take about this? What's your opinion on it? And are you maybe looking to coming to Sigma in Dubai this February? We will. Vicky, there we'll go. So we will have a few few people over there, not too many, uh, but um, I haven't been there, I don't know what to expect to be honest, but uh, I'm sure we have a few clients over there that is based there, so it will be interesting. Perfect. Uh, we will go to all your Sigma, then we have South Africa we will be at as well, and obviously here. From the allure of its luxurious lifestyle to the government's ambitious tech plans, it's evident that Dubai is leaving a lasting impression on people of all walks of life. If you are as intrigued as we are about Dubai, join us for the upcoming Sigma Eurasia this February. This is Sigma Street Talks, signing off. Back at the studio and we're shifting gears from public opinions to a deep dive into the legal intricacies surrounding this topic. Joining me today are two distinguished experts in the field who bring a wealth of knowledge and experience. I'm thrilled to welcome Trevor De Giorgio and Joseph Borch to the podcast. They both bring experience in navigating the legal landscape of the gaming industry. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for, for inviting us today on the other side. So to start off, can you shed light on Dubai's gaming legal landscape? And is there currently a clear framework surrounding the region? People were expecting things to move a bit faster 
And in truth, um, uh, we're seeing that things are moving slower than maybe we expected. Um, but it is normal. Let's keep in mind that this will be one of the first, if not the first, um, Muslim countries to legalize gambling and most probably also online gambling. If you look at the law in the UAE, um, it still says that gambling is illegal. So one has to keep that in mind. So the shift is going to be so big, you can't expect shocks to happen um, suddenly. It is also true that um, the UAE has always had a very open mind in terms of gambling, because if we look at what we had there um, for quite a few years, like a uh, lot of refill companies like Emirates, Draw and Mahzuz, they have been operating there for a number of years. Um, uh, going around the ban uh, 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 under Sharia law um, with some clever uh, business models. And there is nothing written um, apart from a couple of uh, press releases, but there is nothing as such that one can refer to from a legal perspective. So right now it's a, it's a matter of speculation on the legal and the regulatory front. There have been certain actions taken against the lotteries at the beginning. Yes, in the beginning of yeah. January, they actually stopped Mahzouz and Emirates draw from continuing their operations. And why exactly did that happen? Because I still haven't understood. Well, it this. happened because now lotteries are going to fall under the um, uh, remit of the uh, new authority, the, 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 the GCGRA. G so, so and you actually have the development taking place by WIN, um, the Al Almajan Island, an integration. That is something I also wanted to discuss. They've put this forward. Uh, it's a 3.6 billion investment. I mean, it's no, it's no joke. And they seem to be going forward with this. Yes, but if you you can always develop the building, you're developing the building, you're developing the resort. They've so, actually recruited someone out of their their Macau casino win internally in order to go and manage. Yes, and in fact, you said it's going to be American style. I believe it's going to be closer to a Singapore style in uh, framework. Um, I believe that the, the focus, the focus in the UAE is going to be, be mostly on tourism and also on expats living there. Dubai will be a different reality. And I believe that also cultural differences will come into play vis-a-vis -vis the regulation. That's a very interesting point. When considering the um, economic impact vis-a-vis -vis the cultural differences, do you anticipate any problems that might arise? Most of the Emirates, at least, are very different from any other uh, traditional, typical Muslim country. So uh, you already sense a lot of difference there. Now, gaming is obviously a step ahead, but it's not such a shocker compared to what would happen if you had to introduce gambling in some other uh, jurisdiction in the region. Um, this would go down very well in Saudi Arabia, for example. Yes, but we also have to understand that Saudi Arabia is also changing and uh, trying to emulate Dubai. So uh, possibly one of the reasons why the UAE is now looking at gambling is to remain a step ahead mm -hmm. in the entertainment business. So uh, let's keep in mind that even though Dubai has a very good economy in terms of uh, financial services and uh, various other sectors, uh, Dubai depends, no, again, UAE depends a lot on um, uh, tourism. Tourism is fundamental for the economy of, of the UAE. So, so given that it's a global hub, given the growth, well, the development of possibly the different integrated resorts, then you could have a tourism attraction for a number of people to visit the area. Especially in the region, considering that in the region there aren't many casinos. As well. The fact that Dubai, for example, back in 2020 hosted a very successful expo, I think that also put them on the map and shows them this, this is a country where we can organize events, we can. Definitely. Yeah. With all the difficulties that came around with COVID as well, let's face it. Because there was COVID during those years. Yes. In fact, they had to postpone it. But it, when, when they did it, there was still an emergency around the world. They managed to host it and it was a big success. A whole year. Only. To what extent do you think the government should be involved in this decision making? Well, I think... Number one, I think their political system is a bit different to what we are used to. 
Oh, yeah. well, yeah, and then the rest of Europe uh, vis-a-vis the systems that we use. But I still think that, number one, there needs to be consultation on a number of different levels. Um, and ultimately, however, if you don't have the government's blessing, you can't go at something, is for sure, because it is not just something which will have an impact on the economy, but it is a something which will also have an impact on the way of life, because you are changing to a certain way the way things were done in the past. The general motto in the UA is always peace and prosperity. It's going to be very interesting to see how things will develop over the next few months. Um, hopefully we'll start already seeing something. So I think in 2024 we will be seeing. Yes, I'm pretty sure. And uh, hopefully by Sigma, end of February. 25th to the 27th. Sigma we're January. going to hopefully see already something more than what we know now. It will be interesting. I think the next two, three, four months are going to be quite crucial to understand the direction in which the UAE is going. For sure, for the first time that Sigma was held in Dubai <clears throat> to this year, a lot of changes have been made. Do you think it had some effect on uh, people's perspective when it comes to law and when it comes to gambling in general? I would say that possibly Sigma uh, made the event itself, eight people on the ground in the Emirates, much more aware of, listen, gaming is a reality, it is here with us, to our society, that we take it on board, but we model it in a certain way that adapts to our society. I think yes. that's what Sig- Sig- Sigma um, got there at the right time. Um, uh, when it when it was not even possible to speak about gambling yet um, but the fact that the brand is there now and people are getting accustomed to it in that region um, I think it's it's a very positive thing because it has positioned itself yes. before uh, being able to actually smart. exactly so so it's always like that I believe that Sigma was smart in positioning itself there and also considering that Sigma um, uh, has also AIBC as part of its uh, events. Um, uh, the fintech sector there is already very vibrant. Very advanced as well. Yeah, so ultimately, it's not like you're doing a co- a- an exhibition only on gambling, but you're attracting also something that is already very well established there. Joseph, Trevor, thank you sincerely for being part of this podcast. We've delved into the key queries revolving around the type of gaming or gambling that might be permitted in Dubai. While we don't have conclusive answers at this moment, I hope to welcome the both of you back for another in-depth discussion as more information unfolds. Stick around as our next interview, we will bring in a Sigma Group team member to unravel the intricacies of the show. Thank you. Thank you. For our final closing segment, a warm welcome to Ms. Bernadette Bayada, our Senior Events Manager from the Eurasia Logistics team, who is spearheading the effort to make this year's Sigma Eurasia unforgettable as always. Greetings, Bernadette. Hi, Maria. Thank you for having me. Welcome to our Sigma podcast. To start off, considering the collaboration between Sigma and Affiliate World, what is the anticipated number of attendees for this year's event and how does the scale of participation contribute to the overall networking opportunities for all the industry players present in Dubai? This year we are expecting a record number of attendees, circa 15,000, which as you very well mentioned, the fact that uh, Sigma are collaborating with Affiliate World Dubai should greatly enhance the networking and uh, business opportunities for those attending this event. Wow, that's a very big number. In terms of logistics, when it comes to this number, how easy is it for attendees to do their batch collection and is there a way to do it more seamlessly, more effortlessly when it comes to your end? Yes, we are always trying to make the whole process as smooth and efficient as possible. And this time is no difference. 
So on the Sunday, the 25th of February, we are going to have pre-registration at uh, the Vista Lounge at Intercontinental Hotel from 10 a.m. till 10 p.m. We encourage all attendees to come and collect their badge on this day, Sunday 25th, to avoid queuing on the first day of the expo. Very well. Um, with regards to transportation, how easy is it for our delegates to get from the um, hotels to the venue of the event where the event will be taking place? It's very easy, Maria. So we're going to have three shuttle buses, one leaving from each of our recommended hotels. So you've got one from Intercontinental, one from the Crown and another from Holiday Inn. The trip from each hotel will to the festival arena where we're having our exhibition will take around 10 minutes. So we're gonna have a frequent transportation in and, and to uh, the, the venue, let's say give or take every 30 minutes. So if I'm understanding correctly, you are encouraging our delegates to choose these three optional hotels for easier transportation to and from the event venue. Exactly. Now, Bernadette, with regards to the standout speakers and thought leaders, um, what should attendees keep an eye out for during the conference sessions, as well as are there any specific conference discussions or topics that you think are particularly interesting? Well, to be honest with you, it's hard to single out one speaker from another, but one speaker that I am really keen on listening to is Dubai's superstar Saral Madani, speaking about gender equality in business and also she will be hosting a panel regarding the mindfulness in the area of AI and uh, digital economy. Another very interesting discussion will be held by the Dubai Business Center, Dr. Marwan, who will be hosting a session with Yosef Holm with regards to the UAE investment and blockchain landscape. Thank you for that, Bernadette. Apart from being top um, speakers, some of these are also top influencers, I must say. So influencers are a common presence when it comes to Sigma. Is there a dedicated space where um, our attendees, our delegates can be on the lookout for these influencers? Absolutely. So we're going to have a media lounge, which will be dedicated specifically for the media partners and for the influencers. They can make use of it throughout the entire event. It is specifically for them. Bernadette, Sigma is known for its networking activities. Everyone knows this. Could you elaborate on the curated networking activities planned for our delegates this year? Highlighting the balance between professional engagement as well as the chance for attendees to explore the vibrant city of Dubai. Sure thing. So for our premium and platinum ticket holders, this year we are teasing them with a luxury yacht tour, taking them around the Dubai Harbour, the Marina, Blue Water Islands and also Burj Al Arab. Then we've got our signature networking drinks, gathering dinners and awards nights. And to top it all off, we've got the Sigma closing party together with uh, Affiliate Words opening party to give you the double dose of fun. For the party, this is open for all batch holders, so make sure you don't miss out on this one. It seems like a fun-packed event uh, filled to the brim with information for all our delegates as well as a lot of networking activities will be taking place. As we conclude this podcast, I would like to extend our deepest appreciation for your time and expertise, Bernadette, as well as your contributions um, to our audience, which will undoubtedly enrich their knowledge of Sigma Eurasia. Thank you so much, Maria, for having me. We wish you and your team the continued planning success for the near future um, in orchestrating a memorable and impactful event as always. Thank you again. Thank you everyone for joining us on this insightful journey through the dynamic landscape of the UAE. For more in-depth details surrounding the Sigma Eurasia event and its agenda, be sure to visit sigma.world where you can also purchase your tickets under the Sigma Eurasia page to join us in person. As we wrap up, stay informed. Thank you and see you in our next episode.